Of course, daily training alone is not the only explanation for these two men's capabilities. Something in their genes makes them extraordinarily fit for mental calculation or endurance sports. There's nobody in my family without special abilities. My father also was a good uh, calculator. I would say I do have a good predisposition. Both my parents are very, very fit. My dad is a marathon runner. Uh, my mom, is, uh, she's got tremendous endurance, even though she's in her mid-60s. They say one of the best things you can do as a long-distance runner is uh, choose your parents well. <laughs> Genetic research is at an explosive stage, and it's probably only a matter of time before the genes behind these super characteristics are localized. The genes controlling the brain are plentiful, and it will take a long time to make a survey of them all. But the genetic code behind Dean Canaz's running ability will probably be easier to break. A laboratory in San Diego is already well on the way. So the running test is actually very similar to the way you would, you would do it with a human. We, we keep this treadmill going continuously. It's not stop until the animals become physically exhausted. An average mouse can run on the treadmill for an hour and a half. But this is no ordinary mouse. She's been genetically modified for increased endurance with stunning results. Our experiences with the engineered mice, they'll be able to keep running for at least another hour after the normal mice have exhausted themselves. But the engineered mice just keep going. And the unexpected answer is that, that we can assign this to one single change by altering one single gene. The gene normally acts as an on-off switch. And what we did is we just left it in the on position. Increased stamina is not the only advantage of the marathon mice. They're also considerably healthier than an average mouse, and they seem incapable of gaining weight. These mice do not gain weight. They're resistant to weight gain, even though they eat the same amount of food. The gene is called PPAR Delta, and it has a human equivalent. We believe that we can extend these ideas to humans, and we're very, uh, very hopeful that that is going to be possible. The molecular knowledge of human abilities will increase. And some people find it inevitable that this knowledge be converted into tools to propel our evolution to further upgrade Homo sapiens. We're the species that goes beyond our limitations. We didn't stay on the ground, we didn't stay on the planet. Intuitively, people think progress is linear, but actually what we're now realizing is that the speed of change itself is getting faster and faster. We go out a few more decades, changes are gonna be happening so quickly that we're actually gonna to have to upgrade who we are by merging with our technology in order to keep up with it. This was my first major project. It would uh, scan it, recognize the print, and then speak it out loud. Ray Kurzweil is an inventor and entrepreneur, but it is as an oracle that he's gained his reputation, making him one of the world's most sought-after lecturers. If something is an information technology, it doubles in power every year. Now, we've seen that routinely with our computers, but it's also applicable not just to electronic devices. We see the same kind of exponential progression in every aspect of biology, our modeling proteins, and our ability to simulate the human brain is growing exponentially. So we're now at the point where we can actually understand, model, and simulate our own biology and reprogram it just the way we reprogram our computers. And that's going to go into high gear very soon. We can recreate all the organs of our bodies, including our brains, using much more durable uh, materials that are far more capable. We will have millions, ultimately billions, of blood cell-sized nanorobots in our bloodstream, keeping us healthy from inside, also going inside our brains, interacting with our biological neurons, and putting our brains directly on the internet, allowing brain-to-brain -brain communication, expanding our memories, our pattern recognition, our cognitive faculties, and we will be a hybrid 
of biological and non-biological intelligence by the 2030s. Ray Kurzweil depicts human evolution more drastically than anyone. But many people actually consider him trustworthy because of his previous predictions. Well, I have a track record at this point that's pretty accurate. The uh, Age of Intelligent Machines was written 20 years ago. It has hundreds of predictions about the 1990s and 2000s, uh, which have tracked quite accurately. Look at the power of the Internet. There's a $2 trillion economy in the Internet. If we were a nation, it would be one of the largest in the world. And a lot of these predictions were quite controversial when I made them. Now they might seem not so radical today because these technologies exist, but back then they were controversial. The new prophecy from this oracle is that Homo sapiens will gradually replace mortal biology with technology, the end result being a computerized existence. The nanobots would go through the brain, through the capillaries, collect all the details, and then we'd be able to actually recreate all the salient details of your brain. So we'll be able to reproduce the, the essence of our personality in a machine. So if you talk about human evolution, really changing who we are, uh, genetic evolution is really insignificant. We're going to change who we are by really designing uh, human beings version 2.0 and, and merging with that technology and becoming um, machine-like. And uh, that's the future of human evolution. It has been a truly turbulent journey. It started somewhere in Africa. An ape climbed down from the tree and started adapting to new environments. Changes were slow. It took six million years of genetic mutations before the ape turned into a human being. Homo sapiens is separated from the rest of Earth's species in one crucial aspect. It's the only species capable of controlling evolution. And it's hard to see individuals in the future resisting genetic screening to secure the quality of their offspring. Maybe they just need one generation to create a new kind of super breed. And thanks to their technology, they might find ways to live forever. Nobody knows how Homo sapiens' evolutionary journey continues from here. Countless possibilities, challenges and pitfalls along the way await Adam and all other human beings who are being born right now.